Hi, it's Bernadette. Thanks for joining me for another empties video. I did one already that was all of December and half of January, and now this is the remainder of January. And as I mentioned before, I'm trying to not have long empties videos. I'm gonna try to do one a month after this. I'm not gonna be under the misconception that I can do just six in a year because it's now that I'm really focusing on using up a lot of product products, like finishing that one till it's gone. This is going really fast because I had uh, so many half empty things that it's just adding up really quick. Sample of Atelier Cologne for men, smells like garbage. So this is just going in the trash. Vanilla and Sensei. I thought that it would smell like this um, Givenchy cologne that has a lot of vanilla in it, and it does not. Physician's Formula Eye Booster in Ultra Black. This is my favorite eyeliner. I don't think it actually does anything to lengthen your lashes, but it it really goes on smoothly. It I'm wearing it right now, and uh, I have another one open that you probably saw in when I was making my no buy rules that I still am using. So this is something I would have normally I would have repurchased this. However, I'm not. I'm gonna use up all my other eyeliners first before I repurchase this. Bumble and Bumble Hairdressers Invisible Oil Shampoo and Conditioner. I love this. This was a total treat for my frizzy, unmanageable hair. It made my hair silky and luxurious and tame. And I already miss this because I'm using a shampoo that I hate right now. I would definitely repurchase if it was not my no-buy year. And it probably is going to be one of my first purchases once my no buy year is complete. Prep Rally Prep and Prime Mini uh, from Dry Bar, number one choice for detangler. I Right now I have an open bottle of Living Proof and open one of Bumble and Bumble, and the only reason I bought those two was because both times I tried to order this online, it was out at both Ulta and Sephora, so I ended up with two different ones that I'm using now. So yes, this is something I definitely re would repurchase, but not until I'm done all of my other detangling products. This Moroccan oil, I know you're waiting for this. This bottle lasts a really long time because I only need like a, the teeny tiny bit and rub it in my hands and run it through my hair when my hair is still damp. And it's a great anti-frizz product. But I'm out now. Yes, I would repurchase this. Yes, I would have liked to have already repurchased this. Don't have any standalone anti-frizz products right now. So I'm just using up the other stuff that has anti-frizz properties in it. Ah, uh, this is a tough one not to repurchase, I'll tell you that. I love it and I love the smell of it. It smells so good and it makes your hair smell so good. So I'm really going to be missing this, but I'm not going to repurchase it during my no-buy year. Ola Hendrickson Pure Truth Youth Activating Oil. It's one of those things that, you know, I made a video about things I don't need in my life. This probably should have been in that video. I got it with the set of the uh, Night Transformation Gel, which I really loved that product. And then it tells you once that product is absorbed into your skin, then you can take a few shots of this, rub your hands together, put it all over your face at night before you go to bed. But when you do that, all of the transformation gel, it pills up all over your face when you put this on. And I know that whatever is left over on your skin is probably just the method of delivery so these products can get on and then into your skin, but it still is gross when you're rubbing this on your face and then all these little pilled up little balls of yuck are getting in your hands and then they're all over your face. After one or two times of trying that, I didn't do that anymore. I used up my overnight transformation gel, which was wonderful. On nights that I didn't do that, I would use this. And this ended up lasting me a lot longer because it's not something that I wanted to put on my face every night because it really makes your face orange. I think that there's other better things that I should be using instead of this, like uh, for nighttime with retinols and things like this. I think that this is a product that I can skip even though it was very nice. So I, at least for my no-buy year, I would not repurchase that. Belief 
True Cream Aqua Balm. I love this, and normally I don't like heavily scented products because normally they really irritate my eyes and irritate my skin, but this, it smells like a lemon starburst. That's exactly what it smells like when you put it on, which is a wonderful smell for to me. I mean, some people say it smells like pine salt. I don't think it smells like pine salt at all. It smells like, <laughs> like lemon starburst and it, so it was rejuvenating to use in the morning i really like this product yes i would repurchase it but not until i'm out of all of my other moisturizers i have to at least have tried them yeah but this it smells great and this this oh there's another use left on that lid i'm gonna use that again tonight before i go to bed before i throw that one out that's almost empty but yeah, if it wasn't my no by year, I'd, I'd repurchase that right away. And I actually had a little sample of it, so I got that out. And I'm gonna use that before I open up a different moisturizer. This is the uh, acne.org cleanser. Normally, I don't like fo foaming cleansers at all. This cleanser was one of the most gentle foaming cleansers I've ever used. It and it worked really well. It did everything it said. Ultra gentle, thick foaming lather, does not over dry, cleanses completely, rinses clean, clean fragrance free and dye free. So this acne.org cleanser was everything I like in a cleanser that normally is a non-foaming cleanser and this one was a foaming cleanser. If it wasn't my no by year and if I could not get my hands on spectro gel or purity, yes, I would buy this again because I love I love the I love Spectro Gel. That's my favorite, and I love Purity, uh, and I also love this. So it's a hard flip between the three of those. My friend Mimi, she watched my video and she was like, "How do you how do you cut open your products to get more out?" And I didn't really realize that that people didn't do that. And I was talking to my boyfriend. He's like, no, I've never seen anyone do that before. You're the only person I've seen do that. But I know that other YouTubers do this. For, th for this type of a product, if I wanted, I know that there's nothing in here. I would just cut it with utility scissors and get the rest out like that. I would probably cut it this one. If I knew the product was more towards the bottom, I would cut it more towards the bottom. But now this type of product, I would take a carpet knife <laughs> and go all around the edge. And normally, like living with my boyfriend now, if he saw me with a carpet knife, he would come and take the carpet knife and do it for me. But so normally, if I think that the product's about this much full in the bottom, I would cut it around here. Sometimes, you know, you get a pump that, that the pump is not reaching all the way down to the bottom. And you can open up your product and tell that, oops, that sometimes, like this product's pretty good but you can still see that once it's all down, it goes all the way to the bottom. But some products, you take this thing out and you can see that your pump doesn't go all the way to the bottom. And it's like, what the heck are you manufacturers thinking? And if that's the problem, don't cut it way down here. Cut it up here, leave this intact, and you can kind of fit one piece over the other and push it down until your pump gets all the way to the bottom. So that's just a few few tips that uh, I wanted to tell you because my friend Mimi said that people don't know how to do those things. So that's how you get it. And there is like in this one, I'm going to cut this open. I'm going to go get a carpet knife or wait till my boyfriend gets home and have him get the carpet knife. And I'm going to cut it open and I'm going to use up the rest of that cleanser. And I started doing that uh, probably See, I moved to Canada in 2001, and my life ab very abruptly changed to a life where I didn't have as much money as I was used to having. And I really uh, was on a tight budget for many, many, many reasons, and some of them were totally beyond my control. If I had a, something that I liked that was in any kind of container, except for glass, and I knew that I did not have enough money to get it again, I would do everything I could to get every little bit of that pro product out. Like if I had a really nice um, 
expensive sensodyne, sensodyne toothpaste or something like this. And I knew that I was not gonna be able to afford to get that Sensodyne toothpaste when it was done. I would use it sparingly and I would use up, cut it open and use up every itty bitty bit that was in there. If I really like something, I get the most use out of that container. Thanks for joining me. If you like this video, please like this video. If you wanna follow me in my no buy year or my empties or anything else I'm posting, hit subscribe because I don't have a posting schedule. So every time I post, it's a surprise. And so if you want to be notified, you've got to ring the notification bell. And if you have any questions or comments or input or advice or suggestions or stuff that you would like to know or want to see, please let me know in the comments. Bye-bye.